May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Geek Audio mini podcast. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the confines of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So um, today, our, uh, we're going to read what Mary-Kate Spencer had to say in the Haiku Zendo Chronicles. Uh, Haiku Zendo, thus named for the 17 seats, as with Haiku Poems, in Los Altos, California. And, uh, you know, it's from the Haiku Zendo Chronicles. So, here we go. From Mary Kate Spencer. If I saw Suzuki Roshi at a function at Zen Center, his face would wreath into smiles, and he would bow a little and ask me how Los Altos was. I think he loved our group in Los Altos dearly, and when he saw me, he was reminded of all those Thursday morning breakfasts we attended together. When I first went to sit at Los Altos on Thursday morning, we had one sitting service and then a talk by Roshi. Afterwards, Marion Derby served us juice, English muffins, and coffee for breakfast around the dining room table. There was chatter and laughter, and mostly Roshi would watch us, joining in if he was directly asked a question. After a while, I tried to ask him questions about Buddhism. We had a few serious discussions. In those days, I was pretty much bewildered by my life as well as by my new practice. I remember him as a man who came to do his job driving that long way from San Francisco to, I'd say riding, to Los Angeles and back at first twice a week. I remember his smile, his kindliness and twinkle in his eye and his acceptance of whatever was going on. He did not try to change us in any way. He answered our questions. He told me I had an intellectual approach to my practice. He told a student who complained that thoughts of his studies at Stanford filled up his mind during Zazen to be thankful for those thoughts, be thankful that he had something to let go of. The Thursday morning breakfast became very important to me. The sense of community and acceptance and the fact that he was always there. Also, I remember being at Tassajara when he came, something changed there. The air held a glow. There was a magic and a life in everything. When he left, the glow went with him. Other students felt this too. It is like he has come and gone in my life, and I can't think of him as a big, important man, just as a casual friend at first and afterward as a source of light and magic. A friend of mine said to me one day, just think, you and your old lady friends had that great Zen master, the only one of his kind in the U.S., all to yourself on Thursday mornings for several years. I do not think of Suzuki Roshi as a great Zen master. I think of him moving quietly in and out of my life, and somehow now my Zazen and my practice, the Zen community, and our present priest, Kobun Chino Sensei, have become the central integrating point of my life. Wow, thanks, Mary-Kate Spencer. I think those are some very good points. Um, uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, interesting. Now, you know, I lived at Tassajara. Mainly I was at Tassajara from when we got it to uh, when he, Suzuki died. You know, she talked about there was a glow that was there, and when he left, the glow went with him. Um, I mean, that depends on who you are. Uh, uh, not for me. I mean, uh, I just don't experience those magic things. Uh, 
But other people do, you know, and that's good. I don't know what to say more than that. <laughs> okay. This has been a cute audio mini podcast. I'm DC Puba of Cute Audio and Cute Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sonur with Doggett Pandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.